Srinivas Sainiz Datatraya, the Singaporean climber on Mount Everest, still missing at the time of this video. There's been no word of him since he texted his wife at 3.30 last Friday afternoon. He told her then that he had reached the summit but was unlikely to make it back down. So, how dangerous is it to climb Mount Everest? Let's get to the point with Dr. Kumaran Rasapan. Dr. Kumaran, you scaled Everest yourself in 2012. Physically, what typically happens to a climber at such high altitudes, especially as you get closer to the top? So as you climb and you gain altitude, uh, uh, climbers can experience a constellation of signs and symptoms. Uh, most of it, uh, pathological signs and symptoms are classified as uh, acute mountain sickness. And the extreme end of the spectrum is uh, these two conditions called haze and HAPE, which means high altitude cerebral edema and high altitude pulmonary edema, which means that uh, water fills up the brain and uh, uh, water fills up the lungs, causing it uh, to be, uh, for example, haze, you will have uh, confusion, uh, blurring of vision, uh, incoordination and uh, hallucinations, which might make it very dangerous for you to climb. And water filling, like, filling up your lungs in hip can cause you to have uh, breathlessness even upon doing simple activities, cough, uh, feeling of drowning when you're lying flat. So all this uh, reduces the the uh, oxygenation of blood and the delivery of oxygen to the tissues. So this is a, uh, at the extreme end of AMS, which are the two fatal conditions that I've explained. This can happen in all climbers, but uh, it reduce, it's reduced in climbers who are acclimatized. Uh, who have previous uh, experience in climbing high altitude and go a slow, uh, do a slow ascent uh, during that particular climb. And so how does someone prepare for the world's highest peak? To climb Everest, uh, I, all climbers or most climbers should have, have previous experience. They should have climbed other mountains uh, above 6,000, 7,000, and in fact, at least one or two 8,000 meter peaks before attempting Everest. This will ensure that uh, not only they get acclimatized, uh, they, they know the systems in place. For example, they can use their equipment properly. They can have workflows, uh, simple workflows, like where to store their equipment, their bags, how to remove certain things, how to clip on, how to put on their boots in a, in a blizzard. So these systems will be in place and they'll have some experience on how to climb as well, not just their body getting acclimatized to the higher altitude. And during the, and, and they, of course, they have to be in the peak of their fitness. Uh, and uh, ideally, uh, the climbers should not have uh, heart or lung issues because oxygenation and uh, uh, circulation of blood is very important at this point. That does not preclude climbers to climb, but uh, certain medical conditions will uh, increase the chance of AMS and haze and hip. What do climbers on Everest do when there's a medical emergency like the severe and potentially fatal forms of altitude sickness? Should they move on or stay to help your fellow climber? Even um, a Sherpa who has uh, climbed uh, many times, several times, and who is much more uh, physically able than uh, other climbers, other foreign climbers, they find it difficult uh, to help a person, uh, injured climber or fallen climber or exhausted climber at such altitudes by themselves. They usually they form a team of uh, other Sherpas and they have to have a planned execution of a rescue effort. And this requires a lot of logistics and planning to bring one person down at such a high altitude. For them, they themselves to go and rescue them uh, uh, by themselves, it's quite foolish because they will be endangering their lives as well. What possibly they can do is to give them you know whatever uh, comfort they can give them like uh, any food water and maybe uh, text using their gps location or or see how they can inform other people for more help to come by that's i think basically what they can do but even doing that requires extreme amount of effort at that altitude thanks so much for your time dr kumaran